joke. Give me a, like a three count. Come One, on, two, three. See, professional, perfect. Sounds great. Keep that tone the whole time. I got Try you. Try not to whisper. Unless you're like telling us a joke. I don't know. <laughs> you over here sucking dick, dude. No, that would be like this. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm recording him. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, great. Yeah, I want a copy of just that. Just on loop. <laughs> My leg lock game is dog shit since I start like compared to people that train leg locks. Mm -hmm. But like I got a brown belt Monday and he gave me the best excuse. He's like, well, I was going to set up a toe hold, but I'm competing soon. So I didn't, I didn't go for it. That's the only reason why you got that heel hook. I'm like, I got the heel hook because you fucking suck. And you don't want to admit you got tapped to a blue belt. <laughs> you, yeah. It sounds exactly like, uh, Hmm. I wanted to avoid the shootout. Like, yeah, dude, because well, first of all, just so you know, if he was going to do the toe hold and your ankle breaks in a toe hold and you fuck up his knee, uh, you win. <laughs> okay? Because yeah. you're, you can walk, jump, and run away. <laughs> He's going to probably jump or walk or run and then collapse a little bit. <laughs> Who's um, ever the most cripple wins the shootout? Oh, for sure, dude. <laughs> Yo, I, br I broke this ankle that? and I could do 99% of my function. It's a hardcore rolled ankle is all it is. Yeah, if you... If you uh... Uh, not to say that people should be eating toe holds. <laughs> you told me and I have you in a sh like a tip tip straight ankle and I break your fucking leg I win yeah yeah like you you <laughs> I win <laughs> I probably cause like you said the other day the adrenaline's gonna be going through you you're probably gonna be like ah oh, my fucking mm -hmm. ankle but then their leg's gonna snap and they're gonna be like oh, oh <laughs> man fuck out. yeah like if you know you're gonna get a tip tip break like and they're gonna tap you first. You, you probably won. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, welcome back. Whatever. Welcome to on and off the mat. We are off the mat here with Joe Wells, or as uh, Kiahi likes to call him, Mean Joe Green. He's actually not mean. Probably one of the nicest people. I yeah. just got resting yeah. dick face. <laughs> no one wants to roll with me. They're like, fuck that guy. Man, you, it's intimidating. I, don't know what it is. I think it's the beard, honestly. Dude, I look like I can't not have it. I'm hideous, <laughs> I am hideous without it. Dude, like this is just makeup. That's all that I, is. I, dude, I'm just jealous because I can't. I can't. Like, what am I sitting on here? When's the last time I trimmed this? Uh, probably like five, six days. Oh goddamn! Don't tell people that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't grow well. Um, but yeah, uh, we know that you're a really good blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Um, but like, who are you? That's a deep question. Other, other than your, I know, right? So, <laughs> so a lot of times people get asked that kind of question uh, or something similar, like, what do you do for a living? And then you're like, you're probably asking what I do to make most of my income. But what I do for a living is a little bit different, right? So I would suggest probably just like take a piece of that that you like about yourself. <laughs> we know your name's Joe Wells. Um, you know what? Let's just get into it. Like, uh... What, when did you start martial arts? Uh, actually, I was probably six or seven. My mom uh, enrolled oh. me in karate. I got bullied a lot when I was little. Oh. And I forget whatever branch of like, McDojo she put me in. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You were fucking little at one point? <laughs> <laughs> I was this size, just no beard. Jesus. Man, that'd be wild. But I, I trained there. Uh, I grew up in Florida, and I trained at okay. this gym for quite some time. And... Uh, just stuff happened and I got pulled out of it and then football and high school sports and mm -hmm. my parents split up and my mom's from Missouri. We moved to Missouri and I started wrestling oh. and that kind of started everything off for me. And then typical like a uh, meathead just watching UFC is like, I could do that shit. Oh yeah. So I remember those days. Yeah. And then you get punched in the face and you're like, jiu-jitsu is pretty cool. Yep. Yep. I started training in, I want to say 2012. Oh wow. And, uh, well, I blew my ACL out and I took 16 months off. Ooh, how'd that happen? 
Dude, it's the dumbest story. So, like, the shop I used to work in would flood all the time, so you wouldn't pay attention if there was water on the floor. Mm. So I was walking to unlock my toolbox, slipped, and went down on my knee and blew my ACL out. Oh, God. <laughs> I've never been hurt in jiu-jitsu, like, serious or nothing like that, but took 16 months off and then came back and stuck with it since. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think I started probably around, like, 2010, so we're not far off from the starting mm. point. Um man that's that the knee just seems so fragile sometimes <laughs> no it's it's stupid um so when did you get your blue belt where did you get that from i got my blue belt october or september of 20 from kyle watson okay. um i was training up at finney's forever and uh when ezra lennon moved back to columbia missouri i was kind of homeless bouncing around <laughs> trying to find a place to train and Watson's at the time was the best fit for me and mm. I was there for a little bit and then Kyle threw me a blue belt I've spent most of my time training as a white belt yeah we got a lot of people who are here that have been like that um, one of the guys here Terrence he was a white belt for a long time eventually got his blue uh, a lot of people here just kind of settle into the idea yeah white belt for life and then they get their blue belt and they're like uh, I'm still a white belt like yes and no <laughs> But it's a good mentality to have, I think. Um, help, helps keep you in a space where you're able to not be like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Or, you know, the classic, like, blue belt in class being like, yeah, I actually do it this way with their partner. <laughs> you do it the wrong way, shut up, listen to your professor. Yep, yep. That's what uh, I think I heard Eddie say that one time, or, or it was about his philosophy. He was like, yeah, you know, if you, if you do it a different way, that's cool, blah, blah, blah. But, but if you're a white belt, shut up and do the technique. <laughs> I think that white belt mentality is a good thing, though, when you're training. If you always approach everything like a white belt, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, like a lot of, uh, I was pretty good at smash passing and things like that. But when Eric opened up his gym, I was like, I know nothing about legs. We need to start from ground zero all over again. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I know, I know exactly how you feel. Uh, when I came here... Um, I had actually trained with Rick a long time ago. Uh, we got our blue belts like around, like pretty much the same time. We tested same, together. We were presenting our blue belts together, and I took like a four year hiatus. And he spent a lot of time learning leg lock stuff because Gary came in and was like just destroying him with leg locks. He's like, "What the hell's going on here?" And so uh, I came in, and he just started doing that to me, and I was like. Nah, this is a whole new game. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah. No, oh, it's man. super, super beneficial. Actually, I want to ask you about that. How do you feel about testing for belts? Uh, I think upon having my own space, I would like to do it for blue and purple, personally. Um, I just want to create something that makes a higher standard, but I also understand the point rank-wise and creating like handicaps for things like age, for things like, I don't know, if somebody is missing an arm. Like hobbyist versus competitor. Exactly, because uh, everybody's potential limit is different. Uh, I had a conversation with um, Brandon McCatherine about that, and everybody's different. Everybody is allowed to be different, but at the same time having something that looks like a standard so that we can all agree, yeah, that person's a blue belt. They got a person's a purple belt, and then Brown belt, you get, you get when you get. Black belt, you get when you get. No, I, I love that. Did I hear you say somebody's missing an arm? No, it was a hypothetical. Oh, I was like, who yeah. the fuck is missing an arm? That yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was a. Uh, I thought I was your first. <laughs> no, you were my, you, you were my first blue belt technically. <laughs> I, I know one person who's kind of salty about that. They were hoping to to get a belt from me. Well, they can suck my balls. <laughs> No, that's one thing that's like always kind of irked me in jujitsu is like, uh, wh where's the standard for a belt? Yes, uh, and that's I, it's really hard, right? Like, do you look? Uh, cause there's such a range. A fresh blue belt can be at the bottom of the barrel of blue belts, or you can be a fresh blue belt that's kind of closer to the middle of blue belts. And then you see when people get their purple belt, and you're like, that like a blue belt to a purple belt should feel far away. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I agree with it you 100. It should be two to four years of difference in experience so would you say that was the hardest jump in your jiu-jitsu journey from blue to purple no because i was blue belt for forever were you yeah um i would say it's the hardest because it was 
but not right what made it hard was getting back into it and then once i was consistent with it i got it I actually is it it's like almost a point of pride to me but i have i have logical reasoning for it i uh denied being given my purple belt early by somebody uh who's very renowned at jiu-jitsu and i <laughs> Uh, my reasoning though is I wasn't gonna train and I knew that and I was getting crushed by blue belts and he was like no I'm, no you know jujitsu though like you understand it and I, was I like, like how you're putting that Brazilian accent on. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but I was like yeah but I need to train like I don't feel right sitting on that belt and not training like I need to know that I'm gonna be progressing I don't want to feel like the end you know what I mean no, I'm um, with you there so yeah um how did you feel about getting your blue belt? Honestly, after everything that went through at Finney's, like I just figured I'd going to be a white belt forever, and I didn't really care anymore. It was cool. I was happy Kyle gave it to me because I feel like, as a new white belt going or as a white belt going into a new gym, like no one respects you. Like you're just some white belt. And like yeah. at least if you got some color on your belt, people at least okay, he might know about jujitsu. He's not going to spaz out and hurt me, but it's just a belt at the end of the day. Yeah, at the end of the day. Uh, having having also done some karate, right? They were they were always like, "What is a belt? It covers two inches of your butt." And I was like, "Why are you belt around your butt? Like, it should be higher than that." <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the idea still stands, right? Like a belt means less than your capabilities. Which, when we're talking about standards for rank in jiu-jitsu, that is a hard one when we look at people having different skill levels and different kind of potential levels is um how do you how do you do it i mean without comparing them to other well, people that's my whole thing should it be knowledge based or should it be skill based because you could take a d1 wrestler mm -hmm. and he could probably mess up most blue belts oh, yeah. on the mat and then and then but does he know everything a blue belt should know exactly so that's another question that goes into that um do we look at grappling and submission grappling or just the jiu-jitsu portion you know what i mean you could be uh dj jackson get a black belt and not have a guard because you can get up whenever you want mm -hmm. like he's he's got a good point <laughs> you know what I mean? like, it's it's just that kind of a weird space but um the comparison that i think people get locked into i get locked into myself is i compare myself to other you know brown belts who might be really good and i'm like yeah let me sit on that for a while or you know some goals that i would like to accomplish before getting uh, an next belt would be kind of what i would compare myself to but as soon as you start comparing, like you're a blue belt, and you, so let's say you compare yourself to a blue belt who's about to get their purple, like they're at that point or they're beating purple belts, is that a fair comparison? I don't think so. I don't. I don't know. Like I said, if you compare grappling as a whole, you could have a blue belt that's a judo black belt, yep. and he's gonna go to tournaments and just clean house because he can just pin someone and hold them down. Well, to be fair, uh, a long time ago I went to the World Martial Arts Games. I was a white belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. What I knew how to do is pull half, lock down, old school or electric chair, and I knew how to take the back sometimes, which is what happened. It was like a gift wrap back take, and collar choked a dude who was a black belt in standing Jiu-Jitsu. Spent years in standing Jiu-Jitsu. But I sat to my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Tenth Planet guys doing collar chokes. The strangled dorks. <laughs> but um yeah so it, it gets weird but at the same time i like the idea of having a standard so that you know you earned it there's no question about it i agree with that 100 percent. because i think that's going to help combat like some people get imposter syndrome because mm -hmm. i've always been like paranoid like what happens if i get a purple belt anytime soon i'm like i don't feel like a purple belt mm -hmm. that, that's the way i felt when i got my brown belt i was like i asked gary i was like why <laughs> and he was like taken aback by it. He was like, uh, uh, you know, because <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll figure it out. Um, but I, I had talked to uh, Adelaide Cleveland recently about that kind of feeling. So I'm trying to figure out, like, you know, what does it mean to be a black belt to certain people? Uh, and one of his things was he said, didn't feel like he deserved it for six months. I was like, that's about the timeline when I, were, I got my brown belt. And I was like, okay, I can be a brown belt. That's okay. So, eventually it'll happen. But if you trust the person who gave it to you enough, like, you you definitely earned it, you know? 
They're not just like giving you a belt for no reason. Mm-hmm. If you trust them. Give me your belt. <laughs> Give me your belt. <laughs> no means no, Connor. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's cool. So uh, you know what else? Uh, How what long else you been do? Oh, I don't know. I started in twelve and then took 12? sixteen months off. Oof. Yeah, that's rough. That's a question. Like, Everybody gets asked that. Oh, you know How long you've been training? And you're like, oh, well, it's, it's this long. And I hate that question. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Especially now with, like, because you took a three year? Like three or four years. Three, four year hiatus? Mm-hmm. And then add COVID now. Yeah, but you, like, oh, fuck, COVID, COVID, COVID doesn't count for me. I kept training. Yeah, we did. So did a lot of my friends. They yeah. all put mats in their basement. Yeah, We'd all just put, meet up. I literally just spaced out in my living room. Colton came over sometimes. Phil came over sometimes. I went over to, to Jason sometimes. Yep. Like, nah. I was like, I'm gonna keep training. I'm gonna get better. <laughs> oh yeah, because everybody coming in off a layoff, I'm just gonna snap yep. their leg. <laughs> <laughs> Should have kept training. Yep. Hell yeah, man. So, uh, what else do you do outside of jiu-jitsu? True. Right now, just work. But I, uh, I grew up racing like motocross and stuff like that, oh, and cool. started riding again. Um, <clears throat> I got a little bit of land and I kind of farm That's, just to try to take care of myself. Yeah. I want to be like self-sufficient. Oh, like yeah. when COVID first hit, I'm like, I ain't too worried about food. I got like eight, nine months worth of food stocked up. Damn. I got chickens. I got pigs. There's a bunch of deer on my property. Like, okay. Try to be self-sufficient. Out there in Missouri? Yeah. Not too far from the gym. It's like 14 minutes from uh, 10th Planet Crystal City. How did you come into Crystal City? How'd that happen? <laughs> Truthfully, I was uh, scrolling through uh, Craigslist one day on the property <laughs> section the property section. I wasn't doing weird shit, okay? <laughs> and, uh, we believe you, Joe. That's cool if you don't. I mean, I'll show you my personal ads, bud. <laughs> if you want to get weird, we can get weird. Uh, but, I, <laughs> but I found a piece of property that was in my price range, and I uh, called my agent and bought it. That's literally, that's it. That's how I ended up down there. And you just drove past one day and was like, oh, shit, it's a 10th planet. No, I was uh, scrolling on uh, Instagram and I seen 10th Planet Gym coming soon and the, he, I seen the address and I was like, there ain't no fucking gym there. So I drove by like every day for a week. I'm like, there's no <laughs> gym. Like, what the fuck's going on? I thought it was like a fake ad or something. Then I messaged Eric and he's like, yeah, well, no, our soft openings this day come down. And I came and none of you guys would roll with me and uh, I just kept coming. <laughs> it wasn't until the first time, first time I rode with Joe, I was like, God, that sucks. Oh, and really? after that, yeah, dude, it sucked just getting crushed. Oh, man. And For me, that, it was like, man, Joe's so nice. <laughs> I don't think I put any pressure on you. Like, I was scared to, like, hurt you or I'm do a anything. Small person, man. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah. What a weird disposition Jiu Jitsu has. We tried to literally break and kill each other, <laughs> and yet we're so nice. Like, I, I remember you talking about not doing body lock passes to people anymore because you were afraid of hurting them. Yeah. And, like, what a weird thing that we do. <laughs> oh, it's stupid. Like, if you bump somebody with your fist or something, yeah. you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm going to break your arm now, but... Dude, that happened to me. Uh, <clears throat> uh, not to rag on Lewis or anything, but Lewis did that. He straight up palm healed me in the nuts. He, was, he stopped to say sorry. I was like, no, dude, you got to keep going, man. We're in a competition. Come on. Oh, yeah. I seen the funniest thing. Amna was in a competition, and uh, she was going against one of the pedago girls. Oh, And I it was just him. like a push, push, push. And then uh, Eric finally told her to pull, and she pulled and straight ankle locked this girl, like, immediately. And then, like, the girl would tap, and I heard a pop. Oh, whatever. She eventually tapped, and then she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, you went from, like, trying to kill this person to, like, yeah. following them on Instagram. I think that's the funniest thing in jujitsu. Yeah. Thanks for beating the shit out of me. Let's be friends. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally how all her matches were that day. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, for work? You work in cars? Actually, I'm a heavy equipment mechanic. I That's work right. for a uh, Caterpillar dealer. And oh, I'm, snap. Okay. Yeah. It's not bad. Before that, I worked for uh, Metro, and that job's horrible. Oh, that's where you met Roman? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's cool. That garage so cool. is cool, but I moved to a different garage, and the company just started going downhill. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. It's just a shit show there. That Don't ride the buses. Though. Those okay. things are disgusting. Oh, okay. Well, we'll do. Or, or will not do. <laughs> I love that Rome is, like, Roman's name is Roman. His last name. What's his last name? Pierce. 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 Yeah, his last name is Pierce, and he's in he's into cars. Oh, I... 
I do that all the time. Every time he comes in here, I'm like, take your ass back to Barstow. <laughs> he'll look at me and be like, I ain't going back to Barstow. <laughs> dude, he's one of the nicest people I think yeah. I've ever met. And you look at him, it's just like, this dude's going to kill me. He's like one of the most intimidating people. He messages me all the time and he's like, hey man, you want to come over? Because we live like six blocks away from each other. He's like, you want to come over and watch the fights or come over? I know you got flow. We can stream on the... I'm like, no, nah, I don't have flow because I ain't paying for that shit. Yeah. But. Well, I accidentally paid for it. <laughs> How do you accidentally pay for okay, something? Well, I purposely paid for it, but they got me. Uh, I was going to pay for a month because I had different subscription plans or whatever. I was going to pay for a month because I was like, cool, let me watch this Gordon fight and then let me watch... Uh, Kevin Sherrill fight at the Midwest Finishers. And then, and then I press the button thinking uh, it's like, you know, 140, 40, whatever for a year. I'm like, okay, I'll press this button and it'll show me the different subscription plans. And then my my hands move on their own. Right? <laughs> if I open my phone, one of the first things I'll do is I'll check my text, Instagram, and or Facebook. And I mean, and or like all of that might happen before I do what I'm supposed to do. So I press the button and it's like, yeah, you want to pay for this? Face ID, double click this thing. And I just follow directions like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, 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 wait. And it's loading and it's like, paid for. It's like, oh, no. So now I have a year. A whole year subscription to flow. For two fights. <laughs> for two fights. Uh, well, I guess, you know, I'll be watching more. <laughs> yeah, now you can watch like ACC. ACC and... I mean, that I do want to watch that. That's going to yeah. be fun. It'd be cool if you guys stayed for that. But uh no dude we'll be moving out on Friday. Oh. Moving uh moving out. Uh coming back. Coming back. Yeah, yeah we have a, Wait, uh, you got ADC still pulled up? ADCC? <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it later. Let's okay. See how you guys feel. See how Joe feels about the um <laughs> Fuck it, let's talk about it right now. Shit. Yeah. Joe, how you feel about uh ADCC? I'm pretty excited for it. Yeah. What's your what, Yeah, what well, what what parts? 77 looks nasty. <laughs> My glasses. That's ninety nine. Seventy seven. No, fuck no. There's no way. Excuse me. That's yeah. That's negative ninety nine. Negative ninety nine. Minus ninety nine. Eighty eight. Eighty eight could be dope. Dude. A lot of them are going to be sick. I, I think this is one of the best ones. 66? Very curious, yeah. 66 is going to be dope, too. This is. I think this is going to be the most stacked, most intense. I think it's only going to go up from here. Oh, for sure. As big as jiu-jitsu is getting. Is. After, after COVID, seeing the ACC, like how big, how many people were there at the East Coast and the West Coast trials, I was like, whoa, this is, this is, this is real. This is happening now. Yeah, so that's the lineup for the seventy seven. I I wanna see Mika and Cade go at it. Like that that's my whole that's my yeah. dream match. That's just gonna be a fight, man. That's yeah. gonna be a dog fight. I think uh that'd be really fun. I think Mike my, 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 my end prediction is I'll say Lachlan and Mika, dude. That'd be a good one too. Mm -hmm. fight. I don't I don't wanna count out Cade, man. That kid's oh, so yeah. scrappy. I mean the kid is flying darces. <laughs> what the, who the fuck hits flying darces? I mean, the the same person who does flying, excuse me, buggy jokes. Uh, yeah, 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 you think Nikki's yeah. gonna live up to the hype? Man, I don't know. It's hard to live in that Gordon Ryan shadow, dog. God. Yeah. That's a. I don't know. That's a tough. It's a tough. Life. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta because it's funny because like you listen to a lot of people talk about him and like I've heard GSP I've heard his brother a whole bunch of people say in the training room he's the scariest person I just think he can't translate it to competition some people get stage fright I hate well, competing he, he hasn't been tapped in, a, in forever Nikki hasn't mm. he's lost to like decisions mm. um, but I don't think he's been tapped in a while Lachlan's just a different Animal. I mean, like, he's a knee surgeon, isn't he? Yeah. And he's definitely got a specialty in leg locks, I'd say. Yeah. Um, just, do you think that gives him a one up? I think he knows. I mean, he knows way more about the anatomy of knees and how they work. How so to take them apart? Yeah, dude. Yeah. 
He just blows people's knees out and then hands them a business card. If I put them back together this way, then they must come apart that way. Yeah, dude, that's a great business plan. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Job security at its finest. Oh, man. Yeah. There's a bunch of dudes in in there. William Tackett, I think, is going to be a dark horse, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. His his little brother just fought in the Midwest Finishers and won the belt there. uh, Same competition Kevin was in. Oh, uh, yeah, Midwest Finishers. Yeah. Unfortunately, Kevin lost in the first match. Yeah, I mean, that dude just, like, he did not look like he even jumped. It looked like he just, it looked like he sat down, but his body went up into the triangle. It was really strange. I didn't, I didn't get to see it. Oh, yeah, I watched it. They were, uh, honestly, they looked a lot like how Gordon and Felipe were standing, where they're just kind of, like, checking each other out. But the other guy, he kept pulling he kept pulling, and at one point he pulled as Kevin was backing out, and then he got steps up into a triangle. Oof. I fucking hate being in triangles. Just smash your way out of them. I do. I, I, <laughs> I, do, I, to, I, I do. I try. It I try works to, for me, yeah, bud. Yeah, for you. <laughs> I get caught in one of Mario's triangles. I'm like, dude. I'm just pick him up. Yeah. Well, he respects the slam. Yeah, I'll let go. Are like, nah, I'm just going to. I'm just because I'm not really gonna slam you, <laughs> especially in the training room. I'm not slamming you in there, but like <laughs> in a competition, if it's legal, sure. Yeah, just end someone's career. Yeah, slam you on your fucking head. <laughs> what does that have? Mic capabilities? Those the headset? Uh, I think this is more just. Did, did you listen to the last sound? one? Did you find out if it works? I didn't even. He didn't care. Well, then you gotta speak up. People, I, people want to hear you. I can hear me. People want to hear you. I know, but I can. The people hear who me. listen to this. At, with the tone that I'm. Does that mean it works? Right now? Yeah, I, I don't know, dude. We're I don't find think out. it works. It doesn't. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> but I can hear me off of your mic. Oh, okay. Very clearly today, which is great. All right. And in the future, you know, we'll have our little thing, and we'll have like legit mics and whatnot. But I like the mobile setup that we have right it's now. It's fun. So. Yeah, it's fun. The little uh, yeah. casting couch setup. Yeah. Where's this going? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is before or after my private. So, so about the about that. You sign your waiver. Rick likes to make jokes. Have you heard of Mario's privates? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. Yeah, I think uh, in '77, I think I honestly think Mika takes '77. I think he takes. Dude, that. I have no idea. Did you watch him at the last fight to win? I mean, I know he's really good. Oh, dude. I, I know he's he's he put be a clinic on finals, semifinals for sure. It, he looked like um, not Gordon's match with Felipe, but who did he? When he was up uh, with a uh, couch. Yeah, with Jacob. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whenever he fought couch and he was just like playing around, playing, he's like, okay, I'm I'm tired of doing jujitsu. I'm just gonna boop, boop. okay, here it is, and then boom. Yeah. Takes it back. That's how Mika looked. It looked like it wasn't a struggle. Mm-hmm. Looked like he, he looked so everything. effortless. Yeah, effortless. It was dope. Yeah, I think he takes that division. Um, we got. Let's talk this division. This division. Sixty-six. I think. Yeah, I'm excited for this division. Kolobata. Blue huh. belt. I think he's a purple belt now, though. He's a... He should be. I, I think hope he's so. a, a Mendez Brothers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's good. But then Artist Gary easy. Tonin. Um, Geo, obviously. Keith. Uh, has Gary ever gone against Geo? Hmm? I have. Mario has. No, I meant like Gary Tonin. Oh. Oh. Uh, that's, have that's they ever funny. competed? I he's no like, idea. yeah, I, I almost... No, I mean, he... He whooped me. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I also, I also I, I have no I I have this problem where I don't know how to roll, how hard to roll with like upper belts. Who do you see? Uh, hey Emma. What's up, What's up, dog? What's up, dude? <laughs> he was so excited to come see you, and then he's like, sketchy stuff going on. Oh, it's see. my face. Oh, I see he's making that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes me. <laughs> well, the room looks different. That's for sure. <laughs> Um, I like you, dog. Um, yeah, but I don't know. Uh, that's that sounds really exciting, right? That would be their a good styles match. are very entertaining. Yeah, I don't know both if of them. Ever Let's find out. Let's find I don't, out. not to my recollection, but 
That'd be a great match. But yeah, there's, I have a thing where like if I don't know if I don't know who I am rolling with, and especially if they're like an upper belt. Nope, Boogie spotted me. It's usually like across the board though. I don't, I don't know how to, hard to roll with you. you know I mean, that's I the hardest. I don't, don't want to yeah. come across as a dick, but at the same time, I don't want to give you shitty training. It, it's a, it's a confliction. I usually just try to match what's ever given to me. That's fair, but I never know where that stops sometimes. Because there's different things that go into that. You know, you have speed, you have strength, and you have skill. Uh, and then there's good timing versus the timing that's compensated with more speed. You know, I try to dial it back and then be able to ramp up to it. There's no other word. <laughs> we had a new guy drop in today, and uh, he was spazzing out hard. And, like, he hasn't trained in a long time. And mm. I'm like, man, you got to chill, you got to yeah, chill. And then you just put you that yourself. little bit of pressure on him, and then they're like, then you're the asshole all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, that's a recipe. What What do I do? You're scratching and knacking. Oh, I moved it? Yeah. Okay. That's a recipe for disaster, though. Like, if you come back from training, you haven't done it in a while, and you're trying to do everything that you used to be able to do, you're going to get injured quickly. So, I What's guess up? in 2017, <coughs> Gio uh, challenged Gary Tone to a match, and John Danaher was like, mm, that's interesting, but if you're serious... Prove it by rematching Eddie Cummings. What? So, in a kind of EDI variation sub only, no time limit, where it's 30 minutes sub only. If he was victorious. Wait, uh, so they were supposed to fight and, and didn't? No, so I guess Gio, uh, like, made a proposal, like, hey, let me fight Gary. Mm -hmm. And John, being Gary's coach, was like, man, I don't know if you're worthy. So let's test you against Eddie Cummings in a 30 minute like EDI type of game. Mm -hmm. And if you're victorious, then you can get a match with Gary. So I don't think that match ever happened. Man. But Boogie has fought Gary. How'd that go? Eh, maybe Gary I wonder. Fourteen. Gary's one of the most exciting to watch. Oh, for sure. Didn't he fight one of the Rotor brothers in a, like one championship or something? Yep. And he lost. Also, is Mike Lucimetti not doing ADCC? Yeah, Did he, he is. He is? Yeah, he is. He's doing ADCC. Is he not in the 66th division? Right, because is there a lower division? I don't think so. Because I didn't see his, his face on that. Oh, I didn't know Gary Tone does backflips. <laughs> <laughs> He's your mom's favorite grappler. Uh, yeah, dude, that's what I like the most. <laughs> He's also uh, Carmar X's favorite grappler. <laughs> yeah, Carmar X. Look, she's actually about to have her own. She's got a super fight, fight coming yeah. up. Yeah. What? She looks. She looks. God. She must have access to the new all the acai. <laughs> oh yeah, heel hook. Yep. Yep. He got heel hook. Inside heel hook. Yeah, dude. Oof. Speaking of that, let's. Look like it hurt his ankle. So you guys check that out. Or that, he's just yeah, doing is Mikey stretch. not? So is he doing? I think he's doing. Or does he too. just have a super fight? Uh, this is our. Either that or he's just. About Mikey Musumeci, um, one of our close friends, best friend. Garrett's no, best he's, friend. He's not. I They're practically he's brothers. ADCC. He's uh, but he is doing this. Yeah. Oh yeah, he signed with one. Yeah. Yeah, so I was listening to him and uh, Joe Rogan talk, and Mikey's like sold to the the one vision. I just I, I think that's super important right now for grappling. Like ADCC yeah. is important for grappling, but the one championship. Oh yeah, what they're doing. Like, I think that's, that's awesome. awesome. What's up, dog? What's up, dude? <laughs> 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 he said no no one likes me I'm telling you dude oh yeah I, I think uh, the one one championship doing grappling super fights is fucking oh yeah sick oh Super yeah cool. you'll actually get to see the good matches that and it's like okay here's a platform where grapplers can actually make money yes and you can compete yep like in a 
Like in the and it doesn't have to be game. six fights in one day. Yeah, there's it's not a tournament style where you have to fight fifty times. Like yeah, I get that you're not getting punched in the face, but mm-hmm. it's still exhausting hanging out all day. It's so exa- he was so tired after the uh, last PGF qualifier. I was tired too. Cause I was tired during it. Yeah, I was. Uh, dude, I was dog sick. Uh, but then, but then, like as soon as I ate, I was like, I mean, I'm ready for a nap, but I feel way better already. I just continuously felt shittier as the day <laughs> went on. I was so, I dude, I had a fever immediately right before my match, oh, and man. then the entire rest of the trip back. I'm just, I, we didn't have any blankets in the like the van that we took down, so I had a like a a towel that I brought. That was gonna, you know, come wipe myself, clean myself with and shit. I just covered up in the towel. So it's like when you go to your homie's house and he gets <laughs> to give you a blanket. I was just in the seat under a towel, dying. I mean, that's, that's your own choice, man. You brought that towel. I, uh, yeah, I brought it. I'm glad I did. I was cold. And then hot. And then cold. And then hot. Yeah. Got that yeah. fever. Fever chills. Yeah, I think this is... I think... This stuff is sick, dude. And it's uh one's gonna be on Prime now. Amazon is it? Prime. Amazon yep. Prime. Yeah, they signed a deal with them, so it's. I think, I think it's, one's eventually gonna take over. I, I like really? their. I think I like how they treat their athletes. They, That's they a big deal. Great. Well, like Danielle Kelly signed with them. Really? Yeah. She uh, she already had a match, mm-hmm. and uh, Mikey already had a match with one, and. Um, Didn't Gordon sign with them at one yeah, point? He he. I think he is still signed to one, but. I think his contract, he kind of like... He can do whatever he wants. Yeah, he's he's the best scrappler in the world. (laughs) If he does what he says he's going to do at ADCC, there's no more argument. Yeah. Everything's over. I don't care what anyone says. I I don't care what anyone says right now. He's like, he's the best. It's hard to tell, but the fact, just the fact that he didn't do anything he wanted immediately with Felipe kind of says, probably, I'm guessing... For um, Andre Galval, that maybe there's hope. <laughs> yeah, but it's a different time. So, I mean, he's only got ten sure. minutes. He might just yeah. turn it up right off the get go. Yeah. yeah, that might be bad. That's why I was, you know, when I watched this last Gordon match, same thing. The whole time I was like, Nah, he's not. It doesn't. I don't feel like he's yeah. trying. As, no, because well, it's as funny because Donna here said thirty yeah. minutes. All of a sudden, different animal. His things changed a little bit. Changed. Yeah, yeah he, it, it wasn't like an like. And aggressive, like you can see that it's changed, but it was you could tell that you know he slightly changed his pace a little bit, and then he just he he passed his guard, and as soon as his guard got passed, well, technically he didn't. Pass as soon as he guard, started he putting pressure on him, but yeah, yeah, when he stepped over, but he's, he got there, he's like, oh, I quit. I think that was the, the straw that broke the camel's back because he foot swept him. And then he just, <laughs> Felipe looked yeah. demoralized. A little bad. Because he made it look so easy. And then, immediately after that, he passes his guard. And Felipe was like, okay, I'm done. Come on. I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how he does in ADCC. And then he's going to fight Andre. Yep. And yes, so yeah, yes. I just hope Andre doesn't stall for five minutes, score one time, and then go back to stalling. Uh, There's a good chance of that. Yeah. Well, that would be horrible. But I mean, Gordon's been in ACC before, and he's he knows how the game works. Oh, I'm sure him and Donner got the craziest game plan ready to go. Oh yeah. yeah. I think it's super cool that he's doing both 99 kg and the absolute and the super Mm -hmm. fight. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, if and if he just keeps, if he gets the belt and he golds, just walk away at that point. Yeah, what do you have like, left to prove? No, I mean he's put like, a gi on and shut everybody 27? up. Right? I mean, I feel like at that point he's just trying to be like everybody else sucks at jujitsu. <laughs> That's his message. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much his his message every time. He's just like. You all suck at jujitsu. Like you have to get better. Or else <laughs> I'm gonna get fucking bored. Yeah. And then maybe he really does throw on the gi, but then there's. I've that. seen a couple videos of him and uh, Miragali training in the gi yeah. on his Instagram. There's that. There's that question. Can he be Miragali in the gi? Because that dude's a fucking animal. Yeah, dude. I'm what sure if he dedicates time to training it, yeah. he'll yeah. Yeah. But when you don't have to work 
day jobs <laughs> and you can train 20 hours right? a day <laughs> when that is your day job yeah then Mikey Moose Mitch he, he, he say he trains for like 12 hours a day yeah Something but like he that. says he strictly trains with hobbyists uh, he prefers to for yeah. sure weird right? I don't think it's weird at all I, I do I think uh, I like the thought process on it yeah I mean yeah. you get a lot more time to troubleshoot and experiment whereas if you're training with someone who's just trying to rip your head off all the time you might not end up in the positions and be able to figure out like Prime reactions, you know what I mean? I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I am it's just gonna become more scrambly. I am a blue belt. <laughs> I just want to eat pizza and pasta and look like him. Dude. That's, what, that's me it. That me and Mario had that conversation. I could almost eat do all it. day. So close. Just <laughs> eight thousand calories God. of pizza and pasta. Dude, and one pint night. of acai every day. It'd be oh so good. my god, that would be insane. And then be as <laughs> shredded as he is. This kid is shredded. <laughs> It was cool he was on Joe Rogan too, though. Like, I I'm glad that. Joe Rogan brings on just jujitsu athletes. That's right? cool too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hate that uh, he calls himself Darth Rigatoni because I love it. It's hilarious. It's, oh, he's the biggest well, nerd ever. Somebody else put it on him, and he's like, "Oh, this is great. This is what I'm going to do now." Oh, is this him? And who is that? Oh, I, is that not? Oh, it's the, the vice president of one. Yeah. Man, that dude from the side. Yeah, for one second, <laughs> I was like, that's not Marcelo Garcia. Yeah. I thought so too. I was like, Mikey's giving Marcelo tips. Jesus. That's insane. Yeah. Well, um, who's your what? greatest of all time? Who would I consider the greatest of all time? Who's cool. your, okay, I don't mean to like change the thing, but who's your like jujitsu Mount Rushmore? Because I think it's hard to say who's the greatest. That That's a really nice way to put it. Um, back when I was like, uh, becoming a blue belt and in my blue belt space like the, the guy I was looking at who was going to be closest to my division who was winning more was uh, Rafael Mendez but I liked how much more technical his brother was um, his brother didn't win, like, win as much and whatever but I felt like he was a better uh, technician so that's back then. I mean, now I just, I'm like, you know, who's really good at stuff? It's going to be Gordon. Uh, cool. But, like, who's really good at teaching is also really important, right? So I kind of select who who's, like, DVDs and stuff I watch better based on who's better at teaching. Um, for example, Marcelo is one of the absolute greatest. Oh, yeah. So he'd be on that Mount Rushmore, right? But as far as teaching-wise goes... Um, and maybe maybe he's not the one who organized it, um, the the one DVD that I saw that turned me off to it, right? But um, the organization for it was just not. It didn't click with my brain, right? Versus uh, the organization with Lachlan's. That's he has the best DVDs. Well, I thought okay, I can make sense of this, and currently at my ability, that's where I would kind of like tr start organizing things and sectionalizing things I love the way he teaches but as far as organizing that and that format um, then I'm going based off of like his body lock DVD but um, I definitely still prefer Donaher who then gave his teaching style to uh, you know, Gordon and Craig because of their ability to simplify things and turn it into smaller, or not smaller, but more important priorities. Um, also to go with, uh, Sean Applegates is very much in line with the same thought process. Yeah, well, He's like, he here's the important stuff that's going on, here's what we want to focus on, and here's the details as we're going. Um, but that process just clicks real well with me, and it, it turns my teaching style into something I think is easier for me to do better with people. I like the way Brandon McCaffrey teaches too. Like yeah, I, I yeah. like his teaching style. It, and and I've not talked with, more like listened to Brandon talk about how he sets up some things, and a lot of the way he looks at it is, and then uh, you know the Pareto principle. Mm -mm. It's the eighty twenty thing. So what is the twenty percent of the stuff and all of this information that's going to create the eighty percent of the results? So like uh, if you're doing a triangle choke, for example what's the thing that creates the most result? It's cutting your angle because your hip goes from the chest up to the neck. Mm -hmm. No longer are you trying to crush their chest. All of that pressure goes in the neck, right? 
you cut that angle and that gives you the ability instead of your legs trying to like go this way which is not you know perpendicular to your body which is not natural you can start making it parallel with your body in a forward motion and that kind of squeeze is more natural for your body right um that being said those are the details but the 80 20 like if you cut your angle and you have posture control your ability to finish triangle jumps up quite a bit yeah 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 the mount rushmore thing i guess the internet's general consensus is like a lot of gracies on that list oh right 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 so i mean hodger (laughs) marcello gordon uh then i I would like to put small people like kayo and probably mikey musumechi if i just had to pick five yeah off the top of my head have we done no we did top five UFC fighters. Who the hell put Mitsuya Maeda up there? <laughs> like, do we have yeah. footage of him? <laughs> he got Maeda, Carlos, Elio, and Hoist. Man. So is he just listing the lineage? <laughs> right? Like, is this, like, is that what you did there? What are you doing, dude? Like, this guy's got a fair point. Hickson. Yeah. And, yeah, but, like, if yeah. you win 200 matches against people that aren't un- or untrained people, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. Right. Alio Carlson rolls. I mean, How old are these? Uh, this is it's from twenty eleven. Yeah. That I makes a lot. Of, this makes this makes way stuff. more sense. And all it does is bring up UFC people. And well, what what did you type in there? BJJ Matt Rushmore. That's yeah. why. You should type in like how many? Oh, wait, how many faces are Matt Rushmore? Four. 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 Top four BJJ athletes or top four BJJ practitioners or top four grapplers in the world, something like that. My top four would be uh, Tom DeBlast, Henzo. Oh, mm. oh, I love Tom. He's like one of my favorite. That's Henzo, Marcelo. I want to say Gordon, but I mean he's not done yet. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it's hard to throw him up there. He's just so young. But how old are you? Thirty-three. Ah, oh, shoot, man, you're older than me. I'm high mileage too. <laughs> I'm beat down, bud. I'm a rough 33. Oh man. Yeah, this is just MMA stuff. I honestly put Eddie up there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I would. And I'm not like in the tenth planet affiliation. Not like I haven't drank the Kool Aid like you guys, but I'll hang out with you. Hey. I mean, I'll be honest about it. Like, I'm I'm more about it. Less because of Eddie and the system, and more about the people that are in the system. You know what I mean? Like some of the connections I've been able to make. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not all ten p for life either, for sure. I like tenth planet more than I do. Oh yeah, the, most schools, but mm-hmm. it's sh- because we are strictly no gi. Because I don't yeah. like fighting in the gi. I put on the gi twice as an adult. Uh, no. <laughs> Fuck right. no. And he like I had uh, you can ask him I had like a an itch probably six months ago I was like coach I don't know why but I've got this itch I had just got my blue belt and I was like I, I really want to I really want to try the gi out like go and just smash people in the gi and he was like we well, can put the gi on and I can show you why you don't want to do the gi anymore I was like car to piss out that. Just him saying that, I was like, okay, I'm fucking, I'm good. <laughs> and then to add to it, later on, I brought it up again, and we were around Rick, and Rick was like, you don't want to fight in the gi. I can show you why. And I was like, <laughs> here we go again with this, I'll show you why shit. And I thought about it, and I was like, Rick is a brown belt in judo, so yeah. he'd probably throw me on my fucking head, and then collar choke the shit out of me. He would just collar choke the shit out of me, if Mario would. So, I like training in the game. Do one of those flying corkscrew think, baseball bats? I think the gi looks sick, dude. It look, I can't tell everybody this. The gi looks sick. Especially when guys win, and then they're just like, ah, ah, they yeah. rip the gi open. <laughs> fucking just, I've seen more of just Man. shredded dudes in the gi, and like strong ass chicks in the gi than I have in no gi. Like no gi you get like, all kinds of body types. This is a this is gonna be a real big ADD side note. But speaking of gi, uh, there's this really good. 
uh, Jiu Jitsu guy. His name's Homo Bahao. And, uh, I just, what? Homo Lo Bahao. Oh. Home Alone? Home. It's like. I thought you called him Homo. <laughs> That's what I Homo, heard. I was like, what? Like Romulo? No, no disrespect to whoever he's talking about. But, anyways, uh, <laughs> it was a world's man. And all of a sudden, he just goes off to the side after a match. I think he had lost or won. I don't even know. I can't remember the result. But what I do remember is he just started undressing. His gi tops off. That's normal. He's walking around shirtless. Cool. He starts pulling his pants down. And one of the ring coordinators has to go over to him and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> Can't do this. There's children. Right? It was weird. Do you uh, even, uh, like hey. on this page or whatever, all they've got is like Buchacha and mm. Marcelo. Hodger. Hodger. Hodger, yeah. I mean, the coolest thing about Hodger was almost every match, he took the chance to kind of like feel people out, let them attack, <laughs> not give them the full attack, you know, and then all of a sudden he's on your back or mount arm barring you. He's either on your back or you're naked choking you or he's arm barring you from mount. That's it. Like, no matter he's what... stuck to the basics. Yeah, no matter what somebody tried to do to him, that's what was going to happen. I change my mount rush more all the time. I do. Yeah, that's fair. Like, I do. But like, I think the people that will, like, Maybe the top three people that'll stay on my Mount Rushmore consistently are Marcelo, mm-hmm. uh, Jacare, and probably BJ. Just because oh, he's wow. like the first dude. You know? <laughs> Jacare. <laughs> the first yeah, but it's only Jacare because that video you showed oh. me where he got his fucking Have you seen that? arm broke. Jacare yeah. versus Hodger at yeah. Worlds? Man. And he just that like was a G, crazy. He was like, "Yep, my fucking arms broke." That thing was just like dangling in the wind. <laughs> and then the match was over, and he was like, "Oh, my fucking arm!" And then boom, I was like, "Dude, that's 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 that's." There was a they're in it's in one of Eddie's videos, and I think it's one of his EBIs. He's got everybody lined up for the rules meeting or whatever, and he's talking about it. And he's like, "Uh, the world sees like boxers and MMA fighters as like." Uh, these set, like these mean dudes who are crazy and shit like that. But something that stuck with me that you know is an Eddie thing is he, Eddie was like, uh, people who do jujitsu and they do jujitsu every day and like this is what they like do for their living. He's like, these guys are fucking savages. That's never left me because I think about it. I'm like, yeah, man. People who just do purely jujitsu, gra- like grappling. They're a, they're a different animal than like MMA fighters or whatever. I mean, there's just so much. I mean, I guess you know in MMA there's that you can possibly die. <laughs> that's anything. You could die from showering. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I my one of my favorite things has always been like, oh yeah, that could be considered a weapon. Like you realize, like anything, anything. can be considered a weapon. Yeah. Your hands very phone easily case. become a weapon. A yeah. Phone case, yeah. just take that, shove it in someone's trach real quick. That's why the they force. don't get prisoner shit, man. <laughs> Everything's a weapon. Everything's a weapon, dog. Right. Everything's a weapon. Yeah, most of these uh, Google results pull up like IBJJF stuff and sick of it. What's your uh, what's your um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? What's your opinion? There's mm. the word uh, on points based scrappling versus submission. I like the idea of a point system because you can't have sixty minute matches every time. No. Mm-hmm. But did you really win? I mean, you can yeah. be dominant. You can. Yeah. I've rolled with people that they didn't submit me, but there's no way in hell I was going to catch anything. Yeah. And it's hard to say that because in jujitsu, I mean, you could be down. You could be bottom side control like what Gary does and choke you out when you think you're in a great position. Yeah. It, it's tough to say, man. I'm over the point in competition. Like, I like the idea of a quintet. Like, we're doing that. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Double stuff for life. Oh, my that God. sounds weird out of context. Double stuff Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Is a quintet? Yeah, so we're you doing it. You need to come down and film that on September 3rd. Whatever, yeah whatever you got going so on September 3rd we've always had that like argument in the gym like what's better like regular Oreos or double stuffed yeah so I finally talked to Eric and like let's just do a tournament let's just settle let's this settle so we're doing like a quintet style tournament team double stuffed versus team original yep 
Who's on team original? Nobody good. Nobody somebody good. put Gary's name up there, yeah, but I don't think he's doing Gary it. There. Is there a different Eric or something? No, Eric's doing it, but I've got it all planned out how I'm going to beat Eric. Is Eric trying to be on <laughs> team original? Yeah, he's team original. No, i got it planned out. It's according to Eric's rule set. If nobody subs each other in six minutes, both people are disqualified. So oh, I'm okay. just going to go out there and stall. He's not going to uh, submit me in six minutes, and then Mario's just going to clean house. <laughs> Unless you just fight Gary. I don't well, think Gary's no. doing Gary's a, it. Listen, Gary's a no, Gary, Gary and I talked about it. Somebody put his name over there because they were like, Finn's closer to original. That was Zach. Zach's and then, stupid. And then at some other point, uh, they were saying like, no, it's original versus everybody else. I was like, y'all are, you said it, not me. Cool. But then Gary and I were talking about it. First of all, I don't think he's going to be there. Second of all, if he was there, he said he's on the team double stuff. Oh, okay. Well, then that's, uh, that, yeah. That's, yeah, we're golden. That's all set, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, we're good. Don't worry. I, if if you don't, I'll just I'll just sub Eric again. Just oh, I think it'd be funnier him. if I just on his <laughs> <little> set. <laughs> it'd be great. It'd be a better just story. Stall yeah. him. <laughs> I say it. I say it all the time because I I, I really do believe it. If regular if Oreos ask, suck. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but if you ask Gary, like you know, did you compete a lot, like coming up in jujitsu and stuff? He's like, no. In the beginning, he did, but not like. But like he did like, past he, purple belt. I think everybody goes through that phase where they want to compete all the time. Yeah. But like Gary now is he's so fucking good at jujitsu. Like he's so good at jujitsu. If he wasn't like if his body wasn't just breaking all the time and he had good shoulders, that good dude would, and he was competing, that dude'd be a force. Dude, I thought the very first time I rolled with Gary, I thought I was doing so good. I was like, I got him in yeah. side control, I can catch my breath for a second. And I don't know what happened after that. I ended up getting crucifixed from the bottom, or he did some crazy shit. I'm like, what? What do I even do? You're, from like, here? you're like, I'm on a top position. Where's that leg coming from? Why is my hand moving back here? I don't. You, you got. I mean, I know Mario saw it. I don't know. Hmm? Oh no, I saw that. That weird, that weird BS. It's fucking. So he he did this to me. Oh, that's not the. That's not our page. No, well, I don't know why there's two of them. Uh, I think Gary made that one a long time ago. And then just didn't delete it? Yeah. So, Gary did this to me during open mat at 4, four o'clock uh, with my leg. He didn't do all of this, but he pretty much had me in this position. Dude. Man, I love Gary's game, but at the same time, he's got long dinosaur bones. Yeah, I watched this the other day. Dude, so like his his right leg was like grapevined onto mine, so my left hip was stuck. And he was holding my right leg like in a 50-50 position. And he had it held up with a heel hook. And then he just wraps his off leg around me. He was like, oh, I could do this too. And my arm was stuck. So he was like, yeah, if I let go of the go-go, I can just... Yeah, how do you want to die? Yeah. How do you want to die? There's like a thousand ways yeah. to die, Gary Meek. There's a, there's a group of uh, 10th Planet school owners, uh, aka Moonheads, who um, they all have the same philosophy of... How do I make this worse? How do I make this worse? Gary oh, we're in smooth? How do I make this worse? Adelaide yeah. is another one of them. Yep. Uh, Gary, Adelaide, Derek. Maybe a couple more. Oh, man. Derek's I can see Scott Elliott being one of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Derek's. They all also have different. a little bit of CSW background. So I wonder yeah. if that has to be part of it. That's catch man man it's that's, my weakness that's for people who didn't get like, enough hugs growing up right yeah. that shit's yeah. just brutal like catch is my my kryptonite sometimes like i'm like i'm doing something i'm like i didn't know this was a move ah, i gotta tap it's so fucking you just switch to combat jujitsu <laughs> when you're down you switch to combat jujitsu that's the one thing i've learned from eric yeah i mean it shows yeah. in his teachings if that's if it's true it shows in his teachings because in uh, the, you're gonna, uh, say, the it? You're gonna yeah. say it. When Jacqueline was fighting, uh, dude, I don't know what ha- it looked Evan's like. She, it looked like girlfriend. She like zoned out and then pow, and then came to and was like, "Wait, yeah, what did I just do?" Like a, uh, I don't know. She was. They were in a weird position. Jacqueline was on top, and the hand just comes down. <laughs> she just hit this girl in the face, and everybody was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> she was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Going back to what we were talking about earlier, yeah, she was like, "I'm so ja- sorry." She is the most ruthless person in yeah. the gym. She like she's shit. like one of my favorite people, but you get her on the mat, she's gonna kill you. Yeah. She's gonna make it a point to kill you too. Dude, she she, uh, she really put cool. me to sleep one time <laughs> as I was. T- oh yeah, 
it was right when the gym first opened up and uh, she had me in a head and arm choke and I'm just like, this ain't no big deal. Like whatever. I got a couple seconds and uh, you didn't. <laughs> it gets better. So Eric got up, somebody walked into the gym with their kid and he's trying to like sell jujitsu to him. Like, Oh, oh it's no. safe. This, that, and the other. And I was like, okay, this is tight. I got to tap. And I'm tapping and like the kid's mom seen me tapping and Jackie's just sitting there squeezing the hell out of me. I'm out. I'm gone. I'm snoring on the mat. I'm dead. <laughs> oh, see, he's safe. Look, he's still alive. Yeah, he's not totally dead. Uh, next thing I remember, like Eric's got my legs, like shaking my legs out. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? That's, that's hilarious. Oh, put me to sleep. <laughs> I had never seen that kid again, though. I guess they didn't come back. I don't blame him. Yeah, it's always, that's always an interesting thing when we're doing chokes. I have to go over all the signs of going out so you know when to tap and what to do when somebody goes out. And like, What people don't understand is that there are certain conditions that can happen that can make somebody go out faster, but you're still going to have to squeeze for what's likely about three minutes or more of full-on squeeze to get somebody to start like entering brain damage and move towards death. Like, oh, it only takes like eight, 10 seconds yeah. to turn somebody off. But after that, yeah. after, I mean, after know. that, it takes a while. Right. But when everything's done, right, they go to sleep and they snore or they convulse. Sometimes they snore before they're out, you know, but they'll snore or they're convulse or they'll just be completely limp and you'll, you'll know they're out and you'll let go or somebody will be like, Hey, they're out. And then you let go. And then when you're in the training room, it's fine. You wake up and you're like, Wow, my whole life flashed before my eyes. Or, man, that's a good nap. Where am I again? <laughs> I work with a dude that uh, he agreed to let me choke him out. Oh, yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> oh, my God. And he's like, you know, I was like, just hold your hand up so I know. Mm -hmm. And like 10 seconds later, he's on the floor convulsing. He's like, dude, I felt like I was asleep for an hour. I'm like, yeah, yeah dude, it's like that. Yeah. It's the best nap. Like, I, it's the best fast. You ever want to... You want to get that quick 15 minute nap in? Let me put you out real quick. Yeah, but how many times can you do that before you start like causing damage? I, I, that so can't I, be like a daily thing, right? No, I've I, I wouldn't. That. I wouldn't. I've always wanted that. Like being concussed, getting punched in your head, obviously CTE, permanent brain damage, mm -hmm. shit like that. I know getting strangled isn't as bad, but like, are there long term effects of getting strangled and put to like put out? over and over and over like if you get put out uh, twice a week in the training room okay. you should probably learn to tap well yeah, yeah. for sure 100 <laughs> percent. if you're getting put out every day for like it's it, i i'm willing to bet that it's not good for your long-term health yeah probably not. i'm willing to bet that you can heal from it but the question is how long are you gonna keep doing that no yeah that, that's an important question for anybody out there who's letting that happen to ask themselves <laughs> <laughs> Isaac Stackhouse, we love you. Yeah, dog. <laughs> there was this dude. There was this dude in the <laughs> season of the PGA. Yeah. He just can't. No, that was the one. Uh, it was down in uh, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, I watched that dude, one. Dude, it was like every day. Luckily, it was only like four days, but it was like every day he There's went out. Three matches dude. every day. It was four yeah. days. Whew. He went out almost every. Single he went out match. with something to prove. Like yeah, each time. I'm tapping. I, I think at one point, somebody had him in a triangle, and he went out. Like Oh, he was out, he out. He was out. And the ref breaks him up, but it was, it was that, you know, sometimes, like, you'll go out, but you immediately yeah. come back. Yeah. He, like, I think he immediately came back, but his response was, what? No, I was playing He's possum. playing possum, but... He, he didn't recognize you were snoring. He didn't realize that he was out because his plan was to play possum before he went out. And when he came back, he was like, "Cool, wait." That's not a good strategy. Yeah, it's, it's not. You can't like you could play possum and like you know MMA what they or boxing like oh I'm hurt and then crack bam, somebody, catch yeah. somebody yeah crack him. But in the jujitsu tournament, the ref sees if you're like, out, oh, it's lit. done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that and the Brazilian tap. Those are the two things. Can't, can't uh, I wanted to get to this because just in case, but um, we do have like Kiahi yeah, wants this recurring segment oh, yeah. of uh, conspiracy time. Do you have any? First of all, are you 
anti-conspiracy? Oh, or? I'm deep into it. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's like, go. Oh, I'm deep what's into your, it. What's your favorite conspiracy? What's your, oh, what's your top one conspiracy? Or somewhere, somewhere in the, your top five. We had we had Beth casting on a couple of weeks oh, ago. Oh, that was weird. Shout out to Beth. Her number one conspiracy, I don't know if you know about this one. Avril Lavigne. The Avril Lavigne conspiracy. Where she died, yeah. She she's he dead. Knows. And it's that Melissa or whatever yeah. the fuck her name is, chick. And I don't know, dude. That girl looks a lot different than Avril Lavigne. Like, if you put side by sides, they look similar. But whoever Avril Lavigne is supposed to be now also looks different. I know age is a thing, but... I don't know. There's the same one. Eminem's got the same theory. He OD'd and there's like a fucking fake Eminem and all this, oh, that. And I've gone deep now. people, man. Everybody's Elvis. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, you don't <laughs> see yeah, Elvis anyway anymore. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But, you know. I Dude, I can't pick one. I don't want people to think I'm that crazy. Like, I like a lot uh, of the simulation ones. Like, I'll get okay. on Reddit and read all that. Like, oh, yeah, right. I read it's one that was... Uh, in 2000, like, Y2K actually happened. We lost mm. consciousness, and they uploaded everybody to a server. <laughs> How did like, they get us? But hold on, like, it goes deeper. Like, that's why <laughs> shit's, like, so crazy right now, because the server's overloaded. There's too many people on the server. Oh. That's why everything's so batshit crazy right now. Dang, you go deep on that. Oh, I go way deep, too. <laughs> I go way deep. So you're saying, like, the simulation is starting to crash. Yeah. That's why it's just, like... Whatever's running the program is just throwing wild shit yeah. at us. Could you imagine you're just staring off into like a beautiful landscape and all of a sudden the rendering starts bumping back closer to you and you're like, I knew it. <laughs> I just want the cheat code. I, dude, I've, I've met people cool. that have said that like they're just like laying out or sitting out or fucking hiking or something. They look up in the sky and it pixels. Pixel. Oh, okay. So doesn't I've been... that lead into your next question? What about psychedelics? <laughs> <laughs> so um... These are just topic points. So. Uh, maybe unintentionally, but I've been uh, high on uh, on weed before, right? And then just staring at the stars, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, "Is that a grid? <laughs> what, why? Why do I see this right now? I can't unsee it." Like, you know, blinked for a long time. I looked away for a while. I look up, and the more I stare at it, the more I'm like, "Why do I see a grid?" Why is this happening? This is really strange. I don't know, man. If we're in a simulation, this simulation fucking sucks. Oh, this one's horrible. <laughs> I want the next yeah. patch, man. Where's yeah, the DLC, right? dude? Let's this sucks. Can we get some UBI or something? Dude, <laughs> Come on. Wait for the next patch, dog. Like, we need to go ahead and streamline that. Man, if it takes five years off my life, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're only taking years <laughs> off the <laughs> shitty end. Watch me die tomorrow. <laughs> oh. My sacrifice was not in vain. I like a lot of the uh, like ancient alien ones too. Oh, those are fun. Those, those are, are those are my those are mine. The pyramids. Oh yeah. And, oh. And aliens. But like, you had mentioned the mine. simulation one, and it, it, it reminded me of um, the what's the fucking Large Hadron Collider. The, oh, were they? The, yeah, the, the Higgs uh, boson stuff that's going on. The God Molecule and all that. Yeah. What is um, Mandela effect? Yeah, that. where uh, like you think like something's supposed to be in a certain way, and then you yeah. find out it never has been. Like, uh, oh, man, so there's double stuffed Oreos. Everybody thought there was two Fs. There's only one. I didn't know that. Oh no, what? I didn't know that at all. But uh, <laughs> like in the Mandela effect, you heard about the Ber- Berenstain Bears. Berenstain. Yeah, it's supposed to be Berenstain, but there's you only try one look F. It up. It's all Berenstain. I told you, there's Dude, only one F. What? That's crazy. That's that's fucking wild. What? I told you. Man. That's a fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> Go look at every package, man. I found that out and freaked out myself. You get Tyler the Creator out here. So, so that was a fucking <laughs> lie. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude. Yeah. The Mandela effect ones are Yeah. The Bears is, is Curious George, the Flintstones, yeah, all wait, of wait, 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 wait. Does tail? he have a tail or does he not have a tail? Uh, I don't think Monopoly he Man, a Monocle. Yeah, so is this also around the same time that this happened and then people started talking about it that I was getting really into learning about like quantum physics? And so it was really trippy for me. It is it is really weird though, like the Monopoly Man one is one of my like favorite ones. Like he never had a monocle. Yo, hold on a second though. I saw a picture of somebody having like VHS stack 
of Berenstein Bears, or well, Berenstain Bears, but one of them says Berenstain Bears. Yeah. They put that in there to fuck with you. you think Specifically so? to fuck with you. The simulation. <laughs> we, me and Mario talked to, um, you know, Drew, right? Big Butter. Fucking. Drew Winters? Drew Winters. Probably. Have I rolled with him? Yeah. Oh, Big Black Dude? Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. He's yeah, also yeah. mechanical. My bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Drew. Uh, I love Drew. He has, like, he'll, he'll start struggling. Like, physically. You can see it in his face if you, like, just bring up the fact that. He's probably in a coma right now. <laughs> oh, no. And that, oh. like, this isn't real. Dude. And then, so, like, every time that I see him, well, we do one of two things. We always say, like, welcome home, devil dog, even though he's never been in the Marines, he's in the Air Force. Uh, but also, when I see him or he, like, leaves somewhere, I'll just be like, hey, Drew, wake up. <laughs> oh, no. So, he th- <laughs> so that he thinks, Oh, like, my God. In his dream, like he's hearing, like I'm gonna whisper in his ear the next time. Take his back. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, just wake up. Oh, wake don't, up. and then like when he asked me, I'm like, I didn't say shit, didn't dude. Say what are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, oh my god, gaslighting him, dude. Damn, son. <laughs> yeah, I had somebody do that to me. Like, so I dropped acid one time, and this person went way deep, and they're like, "Can you prove your consciousness right now?" I'm like, "Dude, I am too fucked up for this. Don't, <laughs> don't fuck. I'm already like walking that line of a good trip and a bad trip. Don't fuck with me right now." Yeah, oh, man. man. That's, I, I I don't like the ones where I have to question reality. <laughs> Dude, I don't I, like those. Ones. Oh no, but, I like the heroic dose. Let's oh, get let's right? go deep. I, are, let's I go was, deep. Uh, I was uh, you know having a moment. And things were things were good. Things were fine. And then I get the question from who I'm with, and that so the question is, what happens after you die? And I'm <laughs> like, what? Where did that come from? This is during a trip. And I, and I yeah, and I start trying to think like because normally I have answers for things, and I'm like. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. Why are you asking that? And then they're like, well, what do you think happens after you die? And I was like, I don't know. It could be anything. I started like, trying take to take things and that came out. from other places. <laughs> and, it, and then I was like, and then I started, it started going, you know, it was like coming up. And I was like, okay, this is cool. And then it was like, hey, what's down here? Um, I like when they go dark. Oh, man. It's, uh, you learn something about yourself. You get 10 every years time, of therapy right, right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really intense when you when you let it happen and you kind of like get to observe you know what I mean but it always feels like it's happening to you it's very interesting <laughs> I hate trying to explain since we're already on the topic I hate trying to explain what it's what your trip was like when you're not tripping I so hate that because of psychedelics I learned an interesting word called uh, ineffable which basically means you have you don't have the words or there's no real way to explain it with words right uh and it's just kind of funny because it it has to do with like trips um i was listening to uh rick rick strassman on joe rogan too and he was talking about how for his studies he picked people who had tripping experience because they're going to explain it better and a bunch of other reasons but because they'll be able to explain their experience better than somebody who's having it for the first time and they're just like blown away by it all so maybe you should figure out how to explain some things more. Dude, I can't explain things regular sober. That's regularly. fair. That's, fair. Regularly. That's very My fair. My brain does not. No. <laughs> like, I tried to explain sound separating somebody one time, and th- the more I tried to explain it, the more it appeared in my vein, my brain visually, and I was like, oh no, uh, this is not going well. I'm gonna sound crazy. <laughs> the way that I explain myself to people is, and it doesn't help that I grew up in Alabama, but like. Forrest Gump, me, our brains work like that. Same as Forrest Gump. I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! Uh, I think you need to take a run cross country. (laughs) I'm not doing that. I don't like to run. I don't like to run either. I'm on that no run crew. I do sprints. But then I think about doing sprints. I'm like, nah, that, mm. I'm be tired. Yeah, I'll, I don't. <laughs> I don't mind yeah. the cardio. I think it's a. I think it's a detrimental thing for uh, athletes. I I'll get through it when I need to. But there's a there's a mental aspect that kind of goes to it. You know, I forget who I was talking about that with. But they were saying like, it's just you out there, and oh, uh, Matt Small here. That's why he runs like three miles a day or whatever. 
He's like, because it's just him. There's nobody he's competing against except himself. There's nobody he's talking to except himself. And it's about mentally getting through that as a hardship. No offense to Matt Small here, but there ain't no fucking way that dude runs three miles every day. Not currently. Uh, it might not what be every day. Built? Ain't no way, dog. It might not be every day, but it's at least, you know, every week or something. That's good. I'm glad he get, goes out there and gets that road work in. That was my most hated thing it about It sounds like every day, though. MMA was, and boxing was fucking road work. Mm-hmm. Not getting punched in the face? No, I don't, I don't mind that. I mind That's that. probably why I am Forrest Gump in real life. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you got the CTEs? I don't know if it's CTE or I'm just dumb from getting punched, but like, you know, it's... it's At least you got an excuse, man. Uh, like, I got hit, I'm punchy. It's got... <laughs> I, oh, the man. thing is, I'm not chinny. Like, I can still take punches and not get sparked. That's a, I guess that's good. But other than that, I don't, know, I don't know. I don't like getting punched anymore. I don't enjoy it. That's why I don't do it. I have no desire. No. Yeah. We Zero. got some um, we got some new students uh, over here and uh, two of them are like, Yeah, I wanna do MMA and I was like, Cool dude, like you ever wanna like come in here and train and like we'll do some wall work, cage work against on that walls and stuff and I was like, I'll put pads on and gloves and we can train and <laughs> we're just gonna beat them up and they're gonna be like, I don't wanna do this. Or maybe, maybe we beat them up and they're like, oh, I love this. Maybe. Some people are like that. I don't want to do it. I, I know the biggest thing for me in starting to have like an obsession with jiu-jitsu or a, a, a serious yearning to learn it was my old instructor because uh, I started with Taekwondo. He put me in a red naked choke and I was on the ground and I was stuck. And I was like, I don't know what to do. I can't hit him. I have no leverage to hit him. I don't want to hit him. And my friend's like, just tap. And I'm like, I don't know. Well, I was getting choked. So I was like, uh, "What?" <laughs> um, and then after that, I was like, "They put you out." That felt awful. No, but I was Dude. like, I thought I was gonna die. Was I, that your first time rolling? I wasn't even rolling. He just snuck I up just... behind me. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the same guy that put that friend who was telling me to tap uh, for his birthday. He, uh, we had a tradition called birthday beatdowns. I don't, I don't, I don't know what opinion to have on that anymore, but. The point is, is one of his birthdays, our friend got choked out and then drug into a closet, woke up in the closet, feet, <laughs> feet up in the air. Like, it's kind of rapey. It's got them vibes, right? It's a little rapey. It's got rapey. them vibes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. You okay? You need to talk about something. Oh, like it, it wasn't me. It didn't happen to me. It didn't happen to me. <laughs> that you're aware of. Thank God. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, Joe. <laughs> You gotta be questioning some things about my life, man. Speaking of which, huh? Rapey. What? Uh, That's not a good segue. That, that is no, not a good. What are you segue. about to show us? Whoa, dude! Hey, like, now. I'm, I'm kind of gonna leave now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna definitely put this in the video. I'm getting. Like, I'm, I'm getting so hand banana flashbacks. Not, so that this does not. Uh, oh, get okay. Out of context. Craig Jones. See, oh, the false reap. Dude. <laughs> dude, that is oh, hysterical. Man. False reap accusation. Who is that? Who is pissed at Craig Jones saying, oh, you're just a funny man. You're just a funny man. That's all you do. Was that Gabby Garcia? Or was that somebody else? I know. It might him. have been Gabby, but like... They were going to fuck their dude. Was like, Why didn't they do that? I wish they would date. <laughs> Isn't she married? I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't care. He finally got to meet her. He was like, dude, she's so I didn't meet her. I walked past her. Oh. When you go to When you go to, like, Worlds, especially back then, like, you see all the big names. I sat... Two rows behind uh, Jean Jacques Machado one time, and I was like, "This is crazy." Uh, what's that? For Doom. Yeah. Yeah. He honest. sat next to me one time, and I was like, "This guy is fucking huge." <laughs> <laughs> and same thing with Gabby Garcia. I walked by her, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm a small man. <laughs> like, it's yeah. just how I am." She's a beast. Yeah. What's up, guys? Hi. Yeah, I did the same thing with. Uh... Chael Sonnen. I met him back home in is he Is he big? He's fucking humongous. Really? He hasn't dude, looked that big like, on camera. He's huge. Uh, there's a picture of me. Let me see if I can. Let me see if it's on my... Uh, I, met, uh, I met Jeremy Stevens. Who's that? Look, Jer- it's the... Jeremy the, Who the fuck is that guy? Remember when Conor McGregor was like, who the fuck? 
fuck is that guy? No. Oh, why you <laughs> no, it's like the best this. clip. Yeah, it's like, it's, Dang, dude. But uh, your he's a 145er. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I him and I are the same size. He fought uh, 145 sorry, in the UFC. What? You're the same size? He was. Him and I were almost the same size. And he fought at 145. Yeah, that's insane. That can't be good for you. Good guy. Look how small you are. Look how big his hand is compared to mine. It's as big as your face. Yeah, dude. Like me and my cousin like sat and. What did you fight at? You're a tiny oh, little. Okay. I fought at 135 pounds. Uh, dude, you look so Asian there. Dude, look how fucking big he is. He looks scary as shit. Yeah, he was super nice. He was. I was like, hey man, big fan. I also, I'm like. In the amateurs, blah blah blah, and he was like, he was like, cool man, keep doing it. And then like I was like, hey, can I like get you a drink? And he was like, yeah, sure. He was there with his uh, wife and I think his daughter, or and then daughter, you, somebody else. And then you slipped that hypno on his drink. And then... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, he was fucking humongous. Like I was just sitting next to him, and I'm like, this guy's huge. Like I didn't think he was that big. Yeah, him but dude, that bite. his oh, fists look amazing. like two of my hands. Yeah. <laughs> dude, they're big ass people. Like, that's why I fought. At, oh yeah, it's such a, it's such a light weight, dude. Because people at one fifty five and the pros are huge. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. Like Jeremy, he's a one forty five er, and he, we're the same size. Yeah, that's insane to me. I mean, <sighs> I look, I look big for my weight. I've been told that. I've stood next to people. Who are like close to my weight, and I'm like, I don't understand why you're so small and I'm so big. That makes no sense to me. We will dense bones. That's what we say. What? Who the fuck is that guy? We'll close out with this for you. But uh, can you hear this? No. Mm -mm. Yeah, turn up the volume. Bottom right. Here. Yeah. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that like kind of like cascaded and ended that man's career. It really did. I mean, he had some really big fights after that, like, eye poke thing and all that, but I don't really know where he's at now. I think bare knuckle. Oh, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's probably make more money. All right, well, uh, Joe, thanks for coming on. Man. Anytime, man. Anytime. Yeah, I'm gonna close out so you can go check out Mario's privates. Oh, jeez. Uh, you can tell the our followers and everybody where they can find you. I'm not active really on social <laughs> media. I think the shit's kind of stupid. Uh, my Instagram's uh, jwells two two one. You're never gonna find me on Facebook. Look up Joe Wells. There's seven thousand of us. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, All right, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, anytime, bro. Bye, everybody.